Oh, I am freezing. Let's turn up the blower and the heat. Oh, it's already maxed out. And the engine's warmed up. And I got no heat coming through the vents. That's a problem. Let's talk about it. So here's the deal. I have the heat maxed out. It says 90 degrees up here. I have the blower on high and I'm still not getting any heat out of these vents. The engine's fully warmed up. It's actually been running for a while. So I know the engine is providing heat. No matter where I put it, I can set it to blow on the windshield, on defrost, vents, floor, doesn't matter. I'm getting only cold air, uh, basically the air from outside being drawn in. And honestly, it's pretty cold, no hot air. As I just mentioned, my engine is actually fully warmed up at this point, so I can rule out a thermostat issue. I know it's at operating temperature. My water pump is in good condition and it's pumping. And I checked the coolant overflow and I am topped off on coolant. So I can basically rule out mechanical problems with the engine that would have to do with warming itself up. And I can rule out low coolant level because that is not the case for me. It's fully topped off. Once we get inside the vehicle, we can further figure out where our problem is coming from. I want to start at the controls. Pretty much every vehicle is going to have some sort of control panel or control unit for the HVAC system. Whether that is through your screen, uh, if it's a touch screen and you just press a bunch of icons and change whatever you want to change about it, or buttons that are electronically controlled, or knobs that are electronically controlled. And in this case, it's kind of a combination of buttons and knobs. Regardless, in the end, it's all electronically controlled. If you operate them and nothing changes on your HVAC display, so let's say you try to turn the temperature up and the number that displays your temperature does not change as you're turning the button or, or pressing the button or turning the knob, it m is most likely going to be a problem with that particular button or knob because you're turning it or pressing it, but it's not registering that motion. So it, it's not so much an issue further down the line, it's probably going to be that particular button or knob that you're trying to operate. But in our case, that is not it because when I turn that temperature knob up, it's going all the way up to 90 degrees on the little screen. And if I turn it down, it goes all the way to 60. So it's clearly registering my input. It just, for some reason, isn't getting it to the end of its trajectory basically, which we will get to in a minute. But like I said, it's easier to diagnose whether you have a button issue or something further down the line or a knob because it just literally will not register as you press it or turn it. Now, if you made it to this point and everything checks out, unfortunately that leaves you with three things that it could still be. And a couple of those are gonna be, well, not so pleasant to deal with. The best one out of all three is gonna be a blend door actuator. It's just a little electric motor that controls doors inside your heater box. And this one in particular allows more or less heat to come inside the cab. That's why it's called a blend door. It blends hot and cold. The other problem it could be is the blend door itself. They're made of plastic and they can break. Literally just give out break. And even though this can be doing its job, if the door can't move or is stuck, well, it's not gonna have any sort of result no matter what controls you give it. The third problem that it could be, unfortunately, is going to be a heater core issue. Whether it's completely clogged or partially clogged, it will basically give you this symptom that you have no heat inside the vehicle. But if it's partially clogged, you could actually have both hoses, the inlet and the outlet on the engine bay side, be warm. A lot of times when it's completely clogged and there is no water flow or coolant flow through it, one hose will be cold, one hose will be somewhat warm or hot. But if it's partially clogged, coolant can still flow through it, just not enough to provide heat for you. At this point, we're down to three problems. So you have to crawl underneath the dash at this point and diagnose whether it's the actuator, the door itself, which you can without disassembling everything, you can only diagnose by removing this and manually turning it or the heater core, which is a little bit more difficult to diagnose and replace. On the whiteboard here, I have a very crudely drawn diagram of everything that is going on in the HVAC system inside the passenger compartment of your vehicle. You have outside air coming in from, well, outside. It gets pulled in by the blower motor and it gets, well, on this diagram, it splits into two. It doesn't always do that, but it basically can go 
onto the cold side or the hot side. It's how I decided to split them up for simplicity. On the cold side, you can have the uh, evaporator core make the air even colder when you have your AC on. If you don't, it's just gonna blow right through and it'll be basically outside air going through your vents. Or on the hot side, you'll have the coolant heating up your heater core and that's what provides the heat in your vehicle. Down the line here, you have your blend door with the actuator. This is what moves that blend door back and forth and it does what its name implies. It blends hot and cold together. If, it, if you choose to have only cold air come through, it'll block the hot side. If you choose only hot air, it'll block the cold side. Anything in between is obviously a blend. That's why it's called the blend door. When the blend door goes bad, let's say it breaks because, well, it could break for multiple reasons, but let's say it does break. If it gets stuck in the hotter or on the hotter side, well, unfortunately you won't be able to get much heat through. If it gets stuck on the colder side, you'll be stuck with the heat on. So that's not really fun and it's not so much fun to replace it, not because it's a difficult job, but because you have to pull the entire air box assembly or the, the heater box assembly in order to get to it. The actuator is on the outside and it bolts on. Usually you can reach up into the underside of the dash and get to it, but the blend door is on the inside. So that makes it a lengthier job because usually on most vehicles, you pull the dashboard out to get to it. Same with the heater core. The heater core sits on the inside and it's a fairly simple job physically. It's just very lengthy. If your heater core is partially clogged, it will actually restrict the heat that goes through it. So now let's say it's winter, you're trying to get some heat inside the vehicle very cold air is being blown in. It cools down that heater core. And as you can see here, your vents are, the further away they get, the further away, the, or the further the hot air has to travel basically to get to the furthest vent. So that's why you get passenger side heat, driver side cold, because it cannot make its way all the way here and still maintain that heat because it can't get the full heat to begin with. Here I have the blend door actuator, which is just a little electric motor that I took the cover off. I color coded this gear right here, just so you can see it spinning, uh, but it's as basic as this. It's just an electric motor. Sometimes they have a little extra component here and there, uh, maybe a sensor, a position sensor that is, but this is just a basic power and ground motor. Spins a couple gears and basically powers this gear system here to then turn that blend door, which is connected to this final gear. I'm gonna give it power and you can see as soon as I power it up and this is basically simulating you turning the knob and then therefore turning that blend door inside the heater box. But this is what it does. It goes to one side and then when it's done because the blend door has reached its stopping point, if you want it back to the, well, back the other way, this is being a simple uh, power and ground electric motor. You just reverse polarity. I have to hold this gear down because it's, uh, well, it wants to pop off because it's open, but that's it. It's just as simple as this. And then let's say it stops, goes back and so on and so forth. Just goes back and forth and that's how it operates your blend door. With all that information that I just gave you, that should help you narrow down your particular issue. I also strongly recommend doing your research because a lot of these makes and models, sometimes it can be model specific, that are out on the road will have notorious issues. You wanna make sure you pinpoint it so you can jump right to it and just test that directly to start instead of going to other places. Now, of course, you still wanna double check everything else, but this can save you some time if you know that you have a common issue with your vehicle and you can directly pinpoint that. With all that said, I hope you found the video helpful. If you have anything to say, leave it in the comment section below. If you have stories that are related to this situation, other than that, don't forget to subscribe and ring that bell so you can stay up to date with all of our latest content. Thanks for watching.